in this lecture we are going to study about three dimensional transformations okay now uh, the study of three dimensional transformation is very much similar to two dimensional transformations so first of all any point in three dimensional transformation in the three dimensions is represented by x y z and as we have studied the homogeneous coordinates for two dimensional uh, objects or in 2d same here this point in the homogeneous coordinates will be represented by x y z n 1 okay now there we have we had seen objects in 2d like a line square triangles and some polygons so those are objects in two dimensional the objects in three dimensional will be something like a cube there are many objects but we will try to see some objects in this chapter cubes or rectangular parallelopiped or all any 3d object that you know maybe a sphere or a cylinder and so on so we will take these things as our objects and then we will use three dimensional transformations on these objects and we will see what is the output what will happen to that object after using this transformation for example if i have a cube which is a unit cube now a unit cube has eight vertices correct so a, a unit cube has eight vertices one of the vertex i will choose as zero 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 one of the vertex i will choose as one zero zero and zero one zero 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 one and now you can write the other four vertices also so these will become your other four vertices of that cube so if you join all these points you will get a so this cube will this these eight vertices will represent my cube and how are we going to write it we are going to write it in a matrix all these points we will write in a matrix and because we know that we are going to use homogeneous coordinates we are going to insert a one in between them uh, in the last column as one so all these points are now written in the homogeneous coordinates okay and this or this object will be represented as what a cube in three-dimensional space okay now what we will do is we will go in the actual three-dimensional space and try to have a look at the space so that our concepts will be more clear so this is the three-dimensional space okay you can see the red colored is the x-axis the green color is y-axis and the blue color is the z-axis now we can even rotate the plane so that plane that i'm rotating is the plane x y plane okay whenever i plot a point now suppose i plot a point over here okay the point uh, that i will plot over here is let me plot it two three four so I'm typing as two comma three comma four. You can see that point in the space. That point has been labeled as point A. Look at this point A carefully. If I bring the if I bring exactly x y plane plane as front of my eyes, you will see that now this point is having four as the z coordinate that's what we expected so it is at height 4 on the z coordinate if i bring z axis in front of my eyes as if z axis is entering in my eyes now i can see that this point is towards the x axis x axis is red it is two units and y axis it is three units you can see let me zoom it so you can see this is three units and x axis is two units so this is how a point is plotted in the three dimensional plane 
now what i will do is i will remove this plane plane xy has now been vanished and you will just see the three coordinate axis and plotting of the point okay this is how the point looks now if i want all of us know that equation of the x y plane what is equation of the x y plane equation of the x y plane is given by what z is equal to zero so that will give you the plane x y plane which is z equal to zero if i remove this equation and instead of that if i type x equal to zero what will i get i will get the plane y z plane can you see the y z plane so this is the y z plane which is passing through the y axis and it is passing through the z axis and x axis is perpendicular to that plane similarly if i replace this by y equal to zero what am i going to get i'm going to get the x z plane this is the x z plane it passes through the x axis and z axis and y axis is perpendicular to this particular plane okay now what i will do is i will um, take a cube and i will try to see visualize the cube in the x x y z plane so this is uh, a cube in the three dimensional space okay which you can see from any side right so what we are going to learn in this particular chapter is let me just just show you one simple example now look at this particular figure this is a cube and what i want to do is i want to rotate this cube about the z axis now all of us know that the z axis is given by this blue colored axis and when i want to rotate it about this cube about z axis by some angle it will be do something like this without moving the z axis i'm going to rotate the object by some given angle say 60 degrees 45 degrees whatever if i want to rotate the cube about say it's y axis suppose i want to rotate it about y axis it will probably look like this when i'm rotating about the y axis now my y axis is also getting moved but uh, when we are yeah see now it is getting rotated about what it is rotation of that cube about the y axis so these type of things we are going to learn in this chapter that which matrix will do this rotation about z axis will do the rotation about x axis or y axis and so on okay suppose i take a plane y equal to zero as you can see in the screen now on the screen and then i will take a point suppose i take a point as one comma two comma four you can see that point the point is given by a when if i want to reflect this point about this plane that point will be coming here so what will be the coordinates of that point so the y coordinate will just get changed which is one minus two and four so that will be the reflection of that point about the plane which plane about the plane y equal to zero so we are going to learn in this chapter that which matrix will do this job which matrix will reflect the point a about the plane y equal to zero and bring it to the point b this is one more thing that we will be learning in this chapter okay the first type of transformation that we will study is the scaling of uh, three dimensional objects we know that in two dimensional we had the scaling matrix was given by a1 and 1 so this was a 3 by 3 matrix but now in case of three dimensional objects we will need a 4 by 4 matrix which is given by a1 1 and 1 so this will create scaling by factor a or in the x coordinate if i want the scaling in the y coordinate i am going to similarly write 
one a and one and one and the last entry uh, if i want the scaling about the z axis again i will write one one and a and at the end i have to write one if i want uniform scaling if i want the scaling to be uniform in all the axis i'm going to write it as what a a and a and one here if i want overall scaling i will write it as one 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 and uh, s this is called as overall scaling of an object the next type of uh, three-dimensional transformation which is important in the study is called as shearing so what is shearing so if i write a matrix which is of the form one 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 on the diagonal say let me write one 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 on the diagonal first and if i write a a and a b here and everything else is zero okay all other entries are zero this means that this is the shearing in the x coordinate shearing in x coordinate but it is what but called as proportional to y and z axis by factors a and b so these are words these are the phrases that you have to remember similarly if i want shearing along the y y coordinate proportionate to x and z axis and by factors say c and d so what matrix of what shearing matrix should i write the matrix i should write will be one here in x coordinate in the x axis i want shearing by c in the z axis i want shearing by factor d and rest everything is going to be one and all other entries which are not written are to be treated as zero so this is called the shearing matrix right the next important type of matrix is the reflection matrix so third is reflection now you have seen that we we have used reflection about the plane x equal to zero what is the meaning of plane x equal to zero plane x equal to zero means the yz plane and we have also seen reflection about y equal to zero pl plane means the plane is xz plane all these planes i have shown you just now and what is the plane z equal to zero plane z equal to zero is our usual xy plane okay and what should be the matrix if i want to reflect an object about the plane x equal to zero for the plane x equal to zero what should happen is that the x coordinate is going to change if you remember in the previous example we reflected along the y coordinate so the sign of the y coordinate changed right so here if i want to reflect along the plane x equal to zero the sign of the x coordinate only should change and the sign of y coordinate and z coordinate should not change so the matrix will become minus one 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 okay if i want to reflect along the plane y equal to zero then the y coordinate sign should only change and this will become minus one year and one year and one year so similarly for the if you want to reflect an object along about the plane z, z equal to zero means the xy plane you must have a one one minus one and zero okay so this is about the reflection of an object about the coordinate planes after that i also showed you something called as rotation about the axis so we will also need rotation matrices okay so 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 now let us see there are three axes so what are the three axes the three axes are rotation about first is about x axis then you have to rotate an object about x axis i have shown you in the earlier uh, part we have also rotation about the y axis and we also have rotation about z axis now rotation about 
x axis and rotation about z axis are usual but rotation about y axis is not the usual thing okay it will be a slightly tedious thing okay if you look at the three alphabets x y z in the circular fashion so x goes to y y goes to z and z goes to x now here if you if you see in the three coordinates in the x y z if i'm writing x y and z here if i rotate my fingers by keeping my thumb along the z axis my fingers will be curled like this so these are my curled fingers which are moving from the positive x axis to the positive y axis so my fingers will fingers will be first my fingers will be aligned here and then i will curl them and they will move in this fashion and my thumb is along the z axis okay so this rule is called as the right hand thumb rule so from x to y there is no problem right hand thumb rule can be applied okay when i'm going from y to z i do get now i'm going to keep my thumb along the x axis i'm going to keep the thumb along the x axis and i'm going to rotate the my my fingers from y to z okay so y to z so here also right hand thumb rule can be applied but i cannot rotate my fingers from z axis to x axis directly okay so with this small problem in the right hand thumb rule what we have to do is we have to write the rotation matrix for x axis as usual which is our cos theta sin theta minus sin theta and cos theta and one in the z coordinate sorry sorry x axis will be as it is i will write a cos theta sin theta minus sin theta and cos theta as usual in in the y and z coordinate are going to rotate when i'm writing the rotation matrix about the z axis what am i going to write i'm for z coordinate nothing will change but x and y are going to change so there i'm going to rotate which is cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta all other entries are zero please remember so here also it is like this zero zero everywhere okay and here a one and for y axis the right hand thumb rule is not going to rotate the positive z axis to x axis i cannot do from z axis to x axis so i have to rotate from x axis to z axis so if i'm going from x axis to the z axis then what i have to do is i have to change the sign of theta i have to change the sign of theta by keeping the y coordinate as it is then i will get a cos theta minus sin theta sin theta and a cos theta and zero elsewhere and a one in the last entry so this is a minor difference in the rotation matrix about the y axis